But, uh, amen. Open your Bibles. I don't want to speak. I don't want to misspeak. You know, when you, when you represent God, you can't misspeak. You got to really guard your words, guard your mouth. Amen. Yeah, exactly. Exactly right. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 45 through 49. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 45 through 49. Hallelujah. New King James Version. Well, New King James Version. Praise the Lord. All right, we ready? Okay. We had that thing, we tested that thing 12 different times over the last three days. We, the systems will be working because I'm going to throw it in the trash next. Whereas, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We just paid a lot of money and right now you can't even find one. These, these computers. 1 Corinthians uh, 15, uh, 45 through 49. All right, I'm going to read it. Let's read it together if you have the New King James Version. Let's read it together. Ready, read. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Did y'all catch that? Verse 49, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man also. Now, I want to just make a note here when in verse 49 in the New King James, when it says, as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. There's a little note above in mind for we shall, and it, it, it says the little translation of that is, let us also bear. And I'll show you a couple of translations, that, or maybe one, that will read it that way, that will correct that and say, not we shall also, but let us also, in other words, right now, bear the image of the heavenly man. Tonight I want to talk on the subject, uh, tap on the image. Tap on the image. Father, thank you tonight for the word. We receive it with thanksgiving. We take it to heart and we will apply it to our lives immediately. We declare it so in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Much I don't really know about computers too much. I don't, you know, I got this smartphone, but I just make phone calls, receive phone calls. I send texts. I might check on YouTube every once in a while, but for the most part, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, make a phone call. I could really be satisfied with a flip phone, but my daughter told me I needed this this smartphone. Ma, right? Dad, <laughs> need to upgrade your phone. And so what, what's happened with, with the current events of our world, as you know, at the time of this preaching, we're in the, uh, right in the throes of an epidemic, or a pandemic, they're calling it. Uh, it's a panic attack is what it is. Uh, in the world, and it's thrown everybody into a, safe distance uh, lifestyle, and the safest distance is to go do everything electronically, right? So all of our kids right now, they're on uh, a perpetual spring break. Uh, I have news for you parents, and you're, you're hoping that April 16th they're going back to school. I have news for you. They're not going back to school. Let me just, let me just prepare you ahead of time. They're not... They may not be telling you this, but I'm just, I'm just going to give you a heads up. They're not going back to school. Okay? This school year is a wash. They already know it. Okay? The people inside are telling us it's not happening. Okay? Uh, so kids are doing everything online. How many of you, you are working uh, somewhere in a corporate office, but now you've been sent home to work? All right? And you're able to do that because you are able to log on using your computer, uh, your laptop, your Mac, whatever you have, and you are able to log on and, and do your work remotely. I have news for you. CFOs, CEOs, COOs are having meetings as we speak. And they're saying if we can afford to send people home, 
and let them, let them go home and work, and we're paying $5 million a year for rent on this, uh, this building, and we're paying, you know, $1,700 uh, a month for water, and we're paying, you know, $4,500 a month for lights. We can save that money and send everybody home, send most of them home anyway, and have only essential people, and force everybody to work online telecommuting. There will only be certain fields that will not be switching fully. Uh, child care, for example, you've got to have you know, people uh, around your, your babies, so you need uh, this to happen. But for the most part, we, we've shifted into a, a, a computer age. What's, what's jostling the church right now is because uh, most churches are in America, whether they were forced or they just went early, I'll be nice, they went early into this internet only uh, way of ministering to people. Everybody say, be nice, Pastor, be nice. So they're ministering to people electronically. And so there's a, there's a common phrase, if you've been uh, immersed in the electronic age for some time, or if you're new to it, there's a phrase that you're going to hear repeated or see repeatedly, tap on the image. Especially if you have uh, your smartphone kind of person or you're an iPad or a tablet kind of person uh, or you visit someone's website, uh, they tell you tap on the image. You want to go a little further, they'll give you something on the, on the main screen and if you want to explore and find out more, tap on the image. Yes. Right, right, right. Come on. Come on. So that's my subject tonight, tap on the image. But I want to deal with a different image. <laughs> now, what's happening is Throughout our world, people are uh, afraid right now. People are panicking. Our, our world economy is being rocked right now because of this global pandemic that's happening, and people don't know what to do. And the thing about this what, that we're in now is where it's, whereas with a hurricane or some sort of regional crisis, you can, you can escape it. You can go somewhere. But with this, where do you go? So far, the only uh, continent on the planet that has not been affected uh, by the coronavirus, COVID-19, is Antarctica. And I don't know any, any people uh, who are planning on moving to Antarctica. Any takers? No, okay. I don't, I don't, like, I don't like to be cold in December and, and January and February here, so I'm definitely not going. So no matter where you go, you, you, are, you are around, you're surrounded by it. And what's happened, that kind of... Uh, uh, global issue has seized people in fear. It's paralyzed yes. uh, very, uh, a lot of people. And unfortunately, it's paralyzed a lot, a lot of people in the body of Christ. Right. Glory to God. So we have uh, nations. In fact, India, this today was day one of India's uh, stay-at-home order, the whole, the whole country. India, whole country, you stay at home. Uh, here in America, we, not, we don't have a federal, but many states have put stay-at-home orders. And if the states haven't done it, the counties, many counties have done it, and many cities have done it. It's a stay-at-home, it's a shelter in place. And, and as, as much as our civil rights might be being violated, be nice, Pastor. As much as our civil rights might be being violated, they say it's for the common good. I'm not angry with them because they're doing the best they can with the little that, that they have. I understand. They're doing what in their mind is in the best interest of the whole people. Even when they're, um, they're trying to get churches to shut down. I understand what they're trying to do. It's just they don't, they don't understand how much they need us. They don't understand that we are as and more essential than the hospital and the doctor's office and the gas station. We're certainly more essential than the local marijuana dispensary who gets to stay open. Back, Pastor. Come on back. The marijuana dispensary gets to stay open because people need. But again, I'm not upset because they're doing the best they can, the little that they know. But my concern is that if you and I aren't careful in the body of Christ, it's, it's evident. I mean, you can, even the churches that are open, the, the, their, their numbers are drastically reduced, not because we're not having church, but because people, even believers in the body of Christ, they have many, many of them been seized by the same panic, by the same fear. Glory to God. But it's, it's critical for you and me 
in this hour to know who we are. To know who we are. Ask your neighbor, do you know who you are? Now I want you to look on this, uh, at real quick, 2 Corinthians 5.17, or if they get on the screen, we'll just let them do the work for us. They can get it pretty quickly. 2 Corinthians 5.17, uh, I want you to see something here. 2 Corinthians 5.17, most of you probably know it if I started to quote it. Uh, Therefore, no, come on, y'all try it. Therefore, if, I'll give you two words, therefore, if, any man be in Christ, come on, He's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Come on. Very good, class. Very good. So you and I, now it is true there's no condemnation. That is true. It's just not what we're looking for here. So if anyone is in Christ, he is, she is. Say, I am. See, a new creation, it says, Old things or the old life has passed away and behold, all things have become new. Now, I'd like you to get that in the easy to read version for me, please. This same verse, and I want you to see this because it's critical. Remember, I'm talking about tap on the image. It's critical that you and I see who we are and know who we are because the world needs to see Jesus in us. We used to sing this song in my church growing up. I grew up Pentecostal. How many of y'all grew up Pentecostal? We used to sing a song, let the world see Jesus in you. In the life that you live and the service that you give, let the world see Jesus in you. Praise God. I wish I had a few more Pentecost people here. It says, when anyone is in Christ, well, y'all Pentecostal now. I'm Pentecostal now, preacher. I'm Pentecostal now. When anyone is in, well, I ain't know I was Pentecostal. Yes, you are I was Pentecostal. <laughs> when anyone is Pentecostal, <laughs> is in Christ, it is a whole new world. A whole new world. That's all I know about that song. It's all the words I know. Ironically, that song was sung at my wedding. My past came and I got married. Uh, Peggy, some of y'all know Peggy. Uh, she sang that song at our wedding for us. That's all bar I know. A whole new world. <laughs> so it says when you're in Christ, it is a whole new world. I say a whole new world. It says the old things, the old you is gone. Suddenly, everything is new. Everything is new. So even the image, the, I want you to understand, the inner you is new. We used to, you know, I remember Prashera growing up, you know, he's being in church and they used to say, you know, you get saved, look to my hands and my hands look new. Look to my feet and my feet did too. They used to say that, right? But when I got saved, I looked at my hands and my hands the same. Looked at my feet and my feet were exactly the same. Everything was exactly the same. See, it's inside that you become new. And if you keep working with it, if you would do Romans 12 too and be transformed by the renewing of your mind, what has happened inside will begin to show up on the outside of you. So many times people get saved and they, they're, 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 they love God, they, they're trying to do it you know, God's way, but they're still struggling with something. Y'all was honest on this side. Ain't, this side ain't sinning. You, you're struggling with something. Right? Well, why? Because your spirit got saved, but you still got to get this inward man, this, this, this soul, my, your mind renewed to the things of God. Now, it's wonderful. I know people in church, uh, church folk, if you allow that phrase, who they've done a lot of that. You know, I, was, I got saved and I, I quit smoking, praise the Lord. I got saved and I quit drinking, praise the Lord. I got stay, saved and I quit, I quit cheating. I got saved and I stopped doing this and I stopped doing that. And they've done that work to get that difference on the inside. But what they miss, those, some of those same folk right now will not step foot out their house. Because... Although they've gotten changed about those works, they have not been renewed as to who they are. 
they've changed what they do, but don't understand who they are. And one of the things that to me is most important for you and me is to understand who we are. Because if we understand who we are, that changes what we do. Y'all didn't catch that. A lot of people focus on changing what they do without changing who they are. You understand that? All right. So if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Or it says here, it's a whole new world. It says a whole new world. It says old things are gone. Suddenly everything is new. All right. So it's important for me then that we begin to understand spiritual realities. All right. New creation realities or spiritual realities. I taught on spiritual reality uh, sometime last year, I think it was. Remember I taught on understanding spiritual realities? Praise the Lord. Here's, here's a spiritual reality I want to make sure uh, I know and I need to know in this season. I'm no ordinary man. All the men said, I'm no ordinary man. Come on, ladies, say, I'm no, I'm no ordinary woman. Say, I'm extraordinary. I'm extraordinary. Glory to God. Now, now, that's not a common refrain in the body of Christ. Because in the body of Christ, Deke, they're still saying, I'm just a nobody. <laughs> Trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. I'm just a nobody. Or you hear them say, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. See, that's people who have a religious mindset and understanding of who they are and don't understand you're not just a nobody. You're not, you know, there are people who, they get into sin. You get in, you know, see, y'all know sin, remember sin? I know y'all don't do it, but remember sin? You get in, people get into sin and mess up. They say, well, I'm just a man. <laughs> Wait, what happened to a whole new world? A new fantastic point of view. Is it like that? A new fantastic point of view. A new fantastic point of view. <laughs> so what happened to all that? I'm just a man. Well, I'm only human. I'm only human. See, and the reason, I'm just telling you this, I'm just trying to be nice as I can, uh, Elder Baker, is the reason people in the body of Christ are freaking out right now, panicking as much as the world, is because they're, I'm only human. I'm just a man. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody. And what happens is if you have that mindset, then you see yourself then in the same category as regular humans. That what people in the world deal with, you're susceptible to as well. But that's simply not the truth. I said it's simply not the truth. I'm no ordinary man. Come on, man, say it. I'm no ordinary man. Come on, say it like you mean. I'm no ordinary man. Come on, ladies, I'm no ordinary woman. See, I'm a man of God. See, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm a man of God. Now, I know, you know, I'm a man of God. Yeah, I'm a man, of, I'm talking about I'm a preacher. But you're a man or woman of God as well. You're, you're a man of or from God. You're a woman of or from God. I'll show you that tonight. And because of that, you have a different, you should have a different image and for you and I uh, to, to thrive in this time we're going to tap on that image <laughs> open your Bible so go, uh, oh, they got to put on the screen we're going to amplify it for sake of time Colossians chapter 1 28 through 29 two verses I want to show it and amplify it real quick for sake of time here Colossians 1 28 and uh, 29 hallelujah Thank you, Lord. It says here, uh, him we preach, this him is Jesus, right? Yes. Him we preach and proclaim, warning and admonishing everyone and instructing everyone in all wisdom, comprehensive insight into the ways and purposes of God. 
that we may present every person mature, full grown, fully initiated. Y'all know about initiations, don't you? Some of y'all used to be in them little things, them little groups, them little clubs or whatever. <laughs> Even if you weren't in no frat sorority and the Masons, you, were, you was in the little, you know, backyard club. Right? Yes, sir. Everybody had a little club in the backyard. No girls allowed and all that kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Fully initiated, complete and perfect in Christ the anointed one. Verse 29, please. For this... I labor unto weariness, striving with all the superhuman energy which he so mightily enkindles and works within me. I don't know if y'all caught that. Striving with all the superhuman energy. I'll let that sink in. Y'all still pondering. I'm laboring, working with all the superhuman energy. I'm no ordinary man. Superhuman energy is kindled and working within me. How many children of God do I have in here? If you are, you have his DNA. So you have superhuman energy. <laughs> you might look like Clark Kent on the outside. But in reality, you are Superman incognito. Are you following what I'm saying to you? So you have superhuman energy that is kindled and working within you. Y'all got it? Let's go to another place here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. How many of y'all are hearing the word of God tonight? I mean, you're really hearing it and you're listening to it. How many of you are going to put it into practice tonight? All right, let me show you what's happening because you're doing that. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, one of my favorite scriptures here. Watch this. It says, and we also especially thank God continually for this. This what? That when you received the message of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it. Not as the word of mere men. Every time you heard Pastor John preach, you weren't thinking that's just a mere man just talking but as it truly is, come on, the word of God, which is effectually at work in you who believe, watch this, come on, read it. So when you trust in, adhere to, and rely on the word, it exercises superhuman power in you. Everybody say, I'm superhuman. Are you seeing this here? Yes. Glory to God. Amen. Well, I don't know what, it seems like I remember some superhero, I don't remember what, who it was, but they used to tap on the little, what was it, Flash? Or one of those, they used to tap on their chest or something like that. Ultraman, Iron Man, one of them? Who? Y'all don't know. Y'all just think. I don't know. This is all right. We, a long time ago. Iron Man, whoever. But they, they would tap on well, I can tell you, I can give an example, a modern day example, you probably don't know, but um, the uh, wild crass. Some of, if you don't have small kids, you probably don't know about the wild crass. The wild crass, I learned about the wild crass from my kids. Jonathan especially watched the wild crass, and the wild crass, they would tap on the little image of, you know, if they wanted to transform into a bird, they had to tap on the image. If you want to transform and flow in God's power, you got to tap on that superhuman power that's on the inside of you. Tell your neighbor, tap on the image. <laughs> Are you getting this tonight? Now, now, what's happening around us? Some of you may have encountered this already. If you haven't, uh, you probably will. Is that people are mad that you're in church. There are probably people on watching us online right now. And if they could get their comments through, they'd be cussing us out. Church folk, cussing us out. How do y'all have a church? That's, that's, 
That's irresponsible. You're not exercising abundance of caution. If I'd heard that phrase one more time, I'd throw, I was going to throw up. Everybody exercises abundance of caution. And they're mad. They're upset because you're in church. Because they say they're upset because it's, you're not doing what's best for the uh, overall good. That's why they say they're upset. They say they're upset because it's irresponsible. They say it's upset because you can get something and pass it on to somebody else. They say they're upset because of that, but that's not really why they're upset. They're really upset because you're not afraid. They're really upset because they're in fear. Put 1 John 4.18, I think it is on the screen. 1 John um, 418, there is no fear in love, but perfect love, but watch this next line, because fear involves, or or King James says, fear has torment. So when people are in fear and panic, they're being tormented. They can't sleep. If they do go to the store, they... People driving around, and I'm, I'm, I'm messing with the Christians. I'm going to be nice, but I'm going to mess with the Christians. They driving around with masks and gloves in the car by themselves. At home with a mask by themselves. What, you going to affect yourself? Just newsflash, check the CDC. You, know, you ever heard of Center for Disease Control? CDC says masks are for the people who are infected, not the ones who are not infected. So our America is running out of masks is because all the people who are not infected are wearing them. Try not to get infected. But masks are not for the infected. They're for the non-infected. They're for the infected. They gave us instructions. They are, we've already checked it out. If we are permitted to continue church, and I'm praying that we will be, that what we'll do as a church is make sure we have masks on hand so that if anybody gets sick, you put a mask on them. Not put a mask on everybody else, but put a mask on them. Newsflash. But people are panicking. My kids were out uh, the other day. They were out uh, gathered. They had some company, a few couple of the kids over. They gathered out in my front yard and on the street. And they're just, I think they, about, they were about to do a TikTok or something like that, whatever. I don't know the TikTok, some kind of stupid thing. And, and somebody... Walking by, six feet. <laughs> okay, I have another news flash. I told some of y'all already. A sneeze or a cough, particles from a sneeze or a cough can travel 200 feet. What in the world good is six feet? It's not. It's a panacea. It's to make, make people feel good. It's the same reason why they hand out sandbags during a hurricane. Sandbags do no good against a hurricane, any kind of flooding. They do no good whatsoever. But they're to make people feel better in their situation. <laughs> Got it? But even Christians, they're in fear, and they're mad at you, you your cousins, your family, your people. They're, they're mad at you because they want you to be in fear, too. But 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. You want me to take something I don't, I don't have? He didn't, give me, he didn't give me fear. You, didn't, you missed what I said. You want me to be something that he didn't give me. He didn't give me fear. Now, if he had given me fear, okay, I'd have fear. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. But what? Power, come on. Love, and what else? A sound mind. So, only, only choices I can have is power, love, and a sound mind. Don't hate. Don't be mad. God did this to me. 
God did this to me. He gave me power, love, and a sound mind. No, you got to be cautious. You're not cautious. You're fearful because you're still going to Walmart. So you're not really cautious. You're still going to Walmart or around, around 800 people. So let's, let's calm down. Right? So I, I, I don't have a fear image to tap on. I have a superhuman image to tap on. I have a God image to tap on. My, my iPad only has one icon on it. You know what I'm saying? There's only, only, thing, only one thing I can tap on is power, love, and a sound mind. So I, I'm sorry I can't join your fear party. I'll pray for you, and we're going to pray for them tonight. We're going to pray for them tonight. We are. Because we're not picking on them. You know, when, 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 when uh, Gideon was getting ready to go against the uh, Midianites and so forth, 32,000, first thing God told them to do was ask everybody who's afraid to just go on home. You know how many went home? 22,000. Out of the 32,000, 22,000 went home just because they was afraid. But Gideon didn't pick on them. He didn't, you know, all right, praise God, we're going to all get the victory. We're going to all get the victory. So we're going to all get the victory. Praise the Lord. Then he sent another, another, another uh, uh, I guess, 9,700 went home because they didn't know how to handle themselves. All right, let me keep going here. So 2 Timothy 1, 7, can you give me that in the Passion, please? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, in the Passion. Wonderful. It says, for God will never give you the spirit of fear. Come on, shouldn't you be scared? No, he won't give it to me. If God gives it to me, I'll, I'll do it. But the Holy Spirit, in other words, he will give you the Holy Spirit who gives you mighty power. So that's the image I'm supposed to be tapping on. Mighty power, love, and self-control. Control yourself around the toilet tissue. Control yourself around all the chicken. Flour and bacon and rice and people can't. Just control yourself. It's going to be all right. Every little thing's going to be all right. Praise the Lord. Now turn to Mark 5. Mark, Mark 4 rather. Mark 4. Are y'all learning anything, anything tonight? Yes, sir. You may, some of you may not be learning something, but there's something being, being reiterated to you. being stirred up, all right? I don't, I don't know if I'm teaching anything too deep or too new. I just want to teach you what, what we need yes. to, to strengthen the troops. Amen. Whether you're here or online, I want to make sure everybody's strengthened. Because if, if you stay home, you're going to still have to use your faith. You're going to still have to use your faith because the devil will tell you that he's going to come creeping in your window at night. He's going to tell you you're running your air condition and your air condition is sucking in the virus. Your air condition is sucking in the virus inside and pumping it through your house. He'll tell you all kind of stuff. So you don't, <laughs> you don't get away from it just because you stay home. Okay, maybe I'm by myself. The devil ever told you anything crazy like that? Turn the AC off. Because that thing's sucking in air from the inside. I was talking to the, to the, uh, the guy who does uh, the church AC. He was here yesterday, and he, he does my system. And a few months ago, I had him install this uh, UV light system in my uh, uh, attic, attached to the, to the air condition, because it kills particles. And, you know, my wife and the... Uh, one of our uh, daughters has, they deal with these allergies, so we try to make sure we kill those particles so at nighttime they can sleep and, not, and wake up and not be all stuffed up, you know what I'm saying? So we had them installed this a few months ago. And uh, talking to me yesterday, he said, Pastor, I've done like 15 of those in the last 11 days. Wow. Really? He said, people are freaking out. Because wow. wow. <laughs> the devil tell you, it's going to get in your house. <laughs>
That's why people bought all the Lysol and everything. They, they Lysol it every day. It's just you. <laughs> You're going to catch what you had. <laughs> Y'all got me. I'm not picking on them. I'm just, yes, I am. But I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to be nice. I just, I just want to make sure we understand how powerful fear is. And God has not given us that. He's given us power and love and a sound mind. And that you and I have the ability to tap on that image. You got it? In Mark 4, are you there? Mark 4, I'm going to begin reading verses 35 through 41. And I want to read that in the King James Version. Hopefully you have that up for me. Thank you very much. It says, in the same day when the evening was come, the evening was come, he, Jesus, saith unto them, his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. They're going to get in the boat and cross to the other side. He's just finished a big revival, big, big meeting, and they're going to go to the side and get apart. And it says, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Everybody say other little ships. So he's in a big ship, or he's in what we would also call the leadership. He's a leader, so he's the leadership, parents. And there are other little ships that are falling behind. Pastors, are you watching? Pastors, you're listening. There's leadership. And all the other little ships are watching how you handle what's about to happen. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. They're, they're in trouble. Keep going, please. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow, and they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Keep going, please. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace! Be still. And the wind ceased. Remember, there was a great storm, but now it says there was a great calm. That's a total swing in the other opposite direction. Y'all better catch that. So whatever you see happening right now in the earth, I want you as a believer to expect in God to totally swing things in the other direction. You got it? You better be getting ready for a miracle. You better be getting ready for God to bring financial miracles, salvation miracles, healing miracles, power miracles, family miracles in your life as God swings this thing from one place to a whole different direction. Great storm, great calm. Now watch this. And he said to them, he's not going to let them off the hook so easy, Jonathan. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have what? no faith. Notice it says they were fearful. Fearful. They have no faith. So I want you to imagine your soul as a container. If your soul uh, as a container, if it's fearful, there can be no faith. But if you are faithful, come on saints, you can have no fear. Your Bible says a faithful man will abound with blessings. The word says, be thou faithful unto death and you will receive a crown of life. <laughs> Are y'all hearing this? Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in the earth? Will he find faith in your earth? When he comes checking you out, because that's what the Lord's doing right now, I guarantee you, he's checking out his people and he's looking for faith in the earth. Will he find you faithful or is he finding people fearful? He said, how is it that you are fearful? Or why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why would he ask him why, why you have no faith? First of all, they've been in a meeting with him all the chapter four. You see him teaching on the, the four grounds and teaching on how the kingdom of God operates and everything. He's been teaching on faith for three days and demonstrating faith. So now they get into a storm. I better come over here. Now I'm going to talk to the camera. Camera two. He been, they've been teaching him on faith. They've been in a faith meeting for three days. Uh -huh. Now when a storm comes, uh -huh. he said, how is that you have no faith? Now I'm making sure the preachers hear me. 
Because you've been preaching on this stuff for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But when the storm comes, how is it that you have no faith? To all the members all over the world, you've been hearing this, singing about faith. We come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. But when the storm actually hits, how is it that you have no faith? You know why? You're fearful. So what's happening is you were around the teaching of the word, but you weren't receiving the teaching of the word. It was head knowledge to you, but did not become uh, deeply planted in your heart. Remember we read uh, from the scripture about in 2 Thessalonians, uh, I think verse Thessalonians 5.13 about um, those uh, when, the, when you trust in, adhere to, rely on the word, it exercises superhuman power in you. So you can hear the word all the time, but not really trust in it, rely on it, adhere to it, and there'll be no superhuman power. So when, when the storm hits, and guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have storms, whether it's a global storm, a national storm, a local storm, or your personal storm, you're going to have a storm. You got it? So it's, it's in the storm that you find out what you're full of. <laughs> What's in you? All this time you've been hearing the word. All this time you've been singing the word. All this time some people have been preaching the word. What's in you? Because the storms will reveal what's in you. And a lot of folk are finding out. Well, they may not realize, but I'll tell them, ain't no faith in you. Real, ain't no faith in you. Doc, Bishop, Apostle, uh, Tyrone, man of God. When the Son of Man comes, will he, in other words, for Jesus Christ to ask that, he knew that, as, even as Paul said, not all men have faith. So in other words, faith will be hard to find. The, in fact, the Bible says, says in Proverbs that every man will talk of his own way, but a faithful man who can find. In other words, God said it's hard to find a man full of faith. People can talk faith when you got everything, you got a steady paycheck. Cupboards full, everything's wonderful, but let let a let a let a symptom hit your body. Let hell rock your marriage. Then let's see what you're working with. <laughs> Ask your neighbor what you're working with. What you're working with. So fear and faith are diametrically opposed to each other. They cannot coexist. Nor can they cooperate. Fear and faith cannot coexist, nor can they cooperate. Brother Kenneth Copeland said this years ago, and it's repeated throughout the church that fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And if you let something foreign, get in your faith, you might as well throw it out. Or you got to go take it through some cleansing process. Right. You, ever, you ever seen people, uh, or some of y'all may remember, people used to put sugar in people's gas tank? <laughs> <laughs> some of y'all laughing like you've done it before. I, don't, I'm, I heard some squilly laughs right there. Let's... That wasn't me, Pastor. That wasn't me. <laughs> y'all slashing tires too. Oh, Lord. See, once you contaminate it, you got to now, you got to go and empty it completely out and put something new in there. You got it? So they cannot coexist, nor can they cooperate. Now, 2 Corinthians 3.18, amplified. 2 Corinthians 3.18, amplified. I'm moving right along, aren't I? It says, and all of us, with, as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the word of God as in a mirror of the glory of the Lord, are constantly being transfigured 
or transformed into his very own image. Now, this is us looking into his word, in his word, into his glory. That's why this is the Facebook that we need the most right here. Put your face in this book. Got it? He says, when we do that, we are constantly being transfigured. I know for my life, I've been saved 30 years, but it wasn't until almost 20 years ago that I started really digging in this book. And it was then that, okay, my life started to really be transformed. Because I, before then, I was still, you know, that's my testimony. <laughs> but into his very own image, in ever-increasing splendor, and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So notice again, the more we stare into this, we are being transfigured or transformed into this wonderful, glorious image. So what's happening is, y'all remember uh, uh, Jacob, when Jacob, God was about to prosper Jacob, he gave Jacob a dream and he told Jacob to take uh, certain of the animals, the goats and, and the sheep and so forth, and make them uh, stand in front of this, this, this uh, uh, trial. And, and those who looked at this thing with that, that rod, they would develop certain streaks and things like, y'all remember that? So in other words, uh, they became, or what, what they stared at changed their physiological makeup. So when you and I stare into this word of God, it'll change our, even our physiological makeup. So whereas before I was still susceptible to sickness and disease that could, that could kill me. Now, if a disease or a sickness or a germ or a virus comes upon me, I can still ward it off. Because I don't want to sit here and make you think, okay, you're never going to catch a cold, you're never going to catch, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make you think that. Now, I believe there's a place you can get to. But the common Christian rarely hits that place. But what I'm saying is, even, even if you should come down with a cold, you can come up with health. Come down with a virus. You can come up with victory. You understand what I'm saying to you? All right? So that, that's, that's how you and I live. Glory to God. Now, so the more I look into this word, it gives me a picture of what my life is supposed to be and tells me how to get there. The word of God tells me who I am, what I have, and what I can do. The word of God tells me who I am, what I have, and what I can do. Glory to God. I'll say it again. It tells me who I am, what I have. I'm glad I found out I have something. When I found the word of God, man, I have, I have, I have a lot, man. I was living way beneath my privilege, way, I was living substandard. What I have and what I can do. In other words, the word of God will teach me what manner of man I am. What man of woman you are. Praise God. Now go to James chapter 1, verse 21 through 25. In the King James, very quickly, please. James chapter 1, 21 through 25. Glory to God. Glory to God. Everybody still tracking me, right? We're on the same page. Are you getting a bigger picture of who you are? I'm no ordinary man. I'm not, your, I'm not your ordinary Joe Blow. I'm unusual. I'm uncommon. Whatever God has called clean, don't, don't you go calling it common. And I'm already clean through the word he spoke to me. So because I've already been cleansed, I am uncommon. I'm extraordinary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it says here, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, that means extra, of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, that means this word that becomes part of you. Engraft means to join together. So receive the engrafted word. So the word of God is supposed to become part of you. There are so many people in the body of Christ 
who they hear this word, but when they leave on Sunday, <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? But he said the engrafted word, which means it, it becomes part of you. Yes. Anybody ever heard of a skin graft? Yes. With a skin graft, they take skins from one place and graft it to another place so it makes, and now, now as it heals, it becomes one flesh. So the engrafted word, when I receive the word of God, it becomes part of me. I'm part of the word. The word is part of me. Amen. You cut me, I bleed word. You poke me, I'll leak the word. <laughs> you, you, you shout at me the wrong way. Out my mouth, I'm going to yell a word. I forgive you in Jesus' name. <laughs> Increase my faith. <laughs> 70 times 7, praise the Lord. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Praise your Lord. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Praise God. You better get them, Jesus. Okay? Real quick. So notice this is the graph of the word is able to save your souls. Now you're already saved your spirit, but it says save your souls, your mind, will, and your emotion. So it changed. This person that is expressed every day, your thinker, your chooser, your filler. You know, how you think, how you choose things, how you feel, right? So then verse 22, let's keep going, please. It says, but be ye what? Doers. Of the word and not Hear. deceiving your own self. Now, that's crazy if you, you trick yourself, okay? For if a man be a hearer of the word, not a doer, he is like a man, like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass or a mirror. Okay? So through the word, you look at yourself in the mirror. You're, you're, you're reflecting, you know. Hopefully everybody, before you came to church, you looked in the mirror. Look at your neighbor's face. Look at your neighbor's face. You missed something. You missed. All right? My wife, my wife is good for that. She's going to check me. You, you, you missed something. How? You know, and you know you got to check your kids, don't you? Because they don't even look in the mirror. So my mom used to do this. <laughs> Mama, no! Go to school smelling the saliva all day on your lip. Mama, no! And when well, nobody think about no virus back then, your mom used to lick you. For he, he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. He forgets what manner of man he was. Now, in other words, he looked into the mirror, saw something, but if he doesn't do it, he forgets what manner of man he was. So if he sees the word but does not apply the word right away, he forgets what manner of man he was. Now, remember we read, we read, read in Mark 4 about the disciples on the boat? Jesus said, why is it that you're so fearful how is it that you have no faith? I didn't go to the, to the last verse of that. Where Jesus, the, the men said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves obey him. They, they asked, what manner of man is this? What kind of guy is this? Now, here we read that he says, when you look into the, into the law of liberty, into, the, into God's word, but you walk away and don't do it, don't apply it, you immediately forget what manner of man you are. So the, the word has the power to transform you and change you and cause you to now develop a new image. So what happens when believers are not living by the word, they go back out in the world, they go to work and somebody cuss them out, and they, they forget what man of man they were. <laughs> you almost did that. Okay, praise the Lord. People cut you off in traffic or they fight over a parking spot. They forget, you forget what man of man you were. Tell your neighbor, don't forget what man of man you are. Don't forget. <laughs> represent the kingdom. Represent the kingdom now. See, baby, I got to take this word and make it part of my life. I gotta, it's got to be engrafted. Engrafted. Part of who I am. It's part of my makeup. It's woven into the fabric of my life. The word isn't a side note for me. It's how I live. I live by it. Every day. 
Glory to God. So I'm not going to walk away and forget what manner of man I am. Now, by the same token, the same way you people can, uh, not you, other people, they cuss somebody out because they forgot what man of man they were. All of a sudden, when a crisis hits, they freak out because they forgot what man of man they were. The disciples, when Jesus asked them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? What he's saying is you forgot what man of men you were. And they look all about him. What man of man is this? He's a man of man who can do this. And he's saying, why didn't y'all do it? That was his question. Why, why, why didn't y'all do that? You, you forgot what man of man you are? Why didn't you calm this storm? I was telling a group in prayer this morning, uh, I was just reflecting as uh, Elder Baker was praying this morning, I was reflecting about, about that, that night Pastor Kim and I stood in this building, in these two buildings, and we stood against that Hurricane Irma and drove her out of this area. We stood. People had left town. Churches had shut down. Pastors left town. Where, where, you, where you went, Doc? Oh, I went, man, I left town. Man, we, did, we couldn't leave town. This is our city. We ain't going to let Irma come in and destroy our city. The devil. So we stood all night against this, this, that doggone demonic force of nature. We stood and we kept commanding her, shut up. Irma, I told you, shut up. She'd have, woo, woo, woo. Doors was rattling. We had them old windows still, them windows was rattling. Uh, my wife and I would just get up, we walk out, I walk out on that front porch. Irma, I told you to shut up and get out of here. We ain't sleeping all night, you ain't got time to sleep. There's a storm trying to tear my city up. We had the kids, the kids were asleep. They were sleeping in the law office back here, but my wife and I didn't sleep. We were working. <laughs> and that storm that they had tracked to come right through St. Peter, the Category 5, when they showed the track the next day after it was over, that storm had tracked going around. It's like it came and said, Yeah, because we commanded it to. We knew what manner of men we were. And you are that man of man right now. That's the image that God has placed on the inside of every one of us. Are you hearing this tonight? Shout hallelujah one good time. Now let's finish this up here. So whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Now go to 1 Corinthians 15 very quick, please. 1 Corinthians 15. Let's bring this to a halt. 1 Corinthians 15. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became what? A living being. A living being. The last Adam became what? A life Now, the first Adam was Adam, like we, Adam, we know Adam and Eve. Yes. The last Adam was Jesus. Okay? He was, just like Adam was the son of God, the Bible says in, in the book of Luke, Adam was the son of God. Jesus Christ was the son of God. Adam was cr the created son. Uh, Jesus was the begotten son. You and I are the adopted sons. But we're all sons equally. You ought to make sure you get that. Adam was the created son. Jesus Christ was the begotten son. You and I are adopted sons, but we're, we have equal sonship. The Bible says you and I are children of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We have equal sonship. I don't know if y'all catching that. We have equal sonship with Jesus. And you and I are born after the similitude of the last Adam. Now, when you're born into the earth, you're born in the similitude or the likeness, let me use that word, of the first Adam. But when you and I get born again... We are like now the last Adam. Yes, sir. Now watch. Watch what he says. He says, however, the spiritual is not, I'm in verse 4 to 6 now. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward, the spiritual. Got it? So the natural is first. You're born a baby. You're born a little baby in the earth, natural. If, if you weren't born natural, you'd be, uh, you'd be uh, an alien in this planet. That's why Jesus Christ had to be born of a woman. That's the only way he had legal permit to come into the earth. He had to come through a woman. Got it? So the natural is first, and then 
the spiritual. Verse 47, the first man, who was that? Was of the earth, made of what? And the second man, who was that? He's the Lord, Jesus, from heaven. Glory to God. As was the man of dust, Adam, so also are those who are made of dust. <laughs> and, 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 see, most of the church is stuck in this first clause. They're stuck it at Adam. They're stuck at the dust. They're stuck at the first man. Even in the body of Christ. Now, the, the world, they don't have a choice. They are natural. They can, but the church people get saved, and they're still in their, in their image, first Adam image. But it says, and as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. E, my God. Do y'all realize what Paul is saying right here? The Spirit of God is saying to us. So we were, we were like Adam, like dust. But as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. So he says, Jesus Christ is the heavenly man. We also are heavenly men. See, everything changed. A whole new world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are those who are heavenly. Now watch. Verse 49. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. So we were born naturally with Adam's image. Uh, you were born with your daddy or your mama's image. That's what passed to you. That's why you come out and you look like your mother or your father or your mother and your father. Hopefully a little enough of both, there ain't no argument. And no questions. Kind of look like the mailman. What's, you know, so, and then, oh, no, 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 shenanigans, right? So uh, you born the image of, your, of the earthly. Now watch, we shall also we shall, the same, in other words, the same way. Are you catching this? The same way we also bear the image of the heavenly man. My time just ran out. Praise God. Give me 48 and 49, verse 40 and 49 amplified. Let me finish this real quick. 48, 49 amplified. Let's see how it puts it here. Thank you, media. Now those who are made of the dust are like him who was first made of the dust, earthly minded. And as is the man from heaven, so also are, are those of, who are of, earth, of heaven heavenly minded. Are you heavenly minded tonight? So you can't be scared then if you're heavenly minded. You know one of the reasons I'm not scared? Because even if I contracted a virus and died, you know where I'm going? I'm going to heaven. That's, that was, that's the plan all along. Right. <laughs> We're just not, it's just not our time. We got a lot of work to do, right? All right, verse 49. And just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we sh so shall we and so let us also bear the image of the man of heaven. Now, media, do me one favor, last favor. Switch to the, the passage translation. I want to pick up verse 45 through 49 again. In the passion, in the passion translation, praise God. I'm so glad our computer's catching up. It finally woke up. He had to, had to get, get his praise and worship going. Praise the Lord. First uh, Corinthians 15, verse 45 through 49 in the passion. Now, I've been talking good about your computer. Don't let me down. Now. Don't let me down. I've been bragging on you. Praise the Lord. We got it. Praise the Lord, computer. For it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living soul. Got it? The last Adam became what? Life. The life-giving spirit. Keep going, please. Keep going. However, the spiritual didn't come first. The natural precedes the spiritual. 
Got it? So I have a before and an after. Every one of us, we have a before and an after. Okay, let's keep going. The first man was from the dust of the earth. The second man is the Lord Jehovah from the realm of heaven. All right, last two verses. The first one made from dust has a human race. You see this? This is what the people out there and some people in the church still say. I'm only human. This thing will devastate the human race. So the first Adam has a race of people, not races. How many races? One. one. We only want a race. It might be different colors, but we only want a race. Has a race of people just like him who are also made from dust. But watch this. The one sent from heaven has a race of heavenly people who are just like him. Good. God Almighty. He has a heavenly race or a race of heavenly people who are just like him. So I'm not just human. I am just heavenly. I'm just divine. I'm part of the heavenly race and I, according to word, I'm just like him. First John 4 Oh, uh, is it four, four, four? That's greater he than, he, he than the world. No, the one about uh, maybe 17, uh, about as he is, so are we in the world. Somebody looked it up. First John, first John four something. 17, I was right, Barbara. You believe me right? Well, we, we on the same, same team, Barbara. Uh, yeah, that's Ezekiel, but we like first John. Ezekiel's not bad either. Somebody got it, 1 John 4, 17? Yes, sir. What does it say? Is, that's not it? That's it? Yes. Barbara, we were right. High five, man. High five, man. <laughs> as he is, as he is. Now, what we just read, okay, let's, let's read. We're going to read 17 and 18 so y'all understand context. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of Corona. Because as he is. See, right now is a day of judgment. Right now is a day of discerning. We're going to be able to tell real easy who got it and who ain't. This is a day of judgment. And, but it says because as he is, so are we in this world. Give me verse 18. Verse 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. I've been made perfect in love. I know who I am. I know who I am. Y'all got it? All right, now. Uh, give me that scripture one more time. First Corinthians 15, 49. We'll close. 1 Corinthians 15, 49, the passion. In the passion, please. 1 Corinthians 15, 49, passion. I hope this has helped y'all tonight. Yes, See, I'm, I'm trying to load you up because at this point, I'm not sure the next time we're going to be together. I don't, I don't know. I, if, if, I, if I was a member of this church, I would have made sure I flooded this church tonight. Because we don't know the next time we're going to be together. First thing is 15, 49. Once we carried the likeness of the man of dust, but now let us carry. That's what they tell people. Well, you catch this virus, you may not get sick, but you'll be a carrier. I am a carrier. You're right, I am a carrier. You know what I carry? The likeness of the man of heaven. Get on your feet. Come on, let's, let's do something here. <laughs> I'm a carrier. Everybody say, I'm a carrier. I am a carrier. I carry the likeness of the man of, of, of heaven. So because of that, I do not abide in fear, and I do not let fear abide in me. And let people get angry. Let them be upset. 
Now, we're, we're going to be respectful. If, if, if it is the case that we find, you know, that, that is, is we can't meet, we already have a strategic plan in place on how to uh, carry on and so forth. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to be home scared. I only be at home because they tell me I got to stay home. <laughs> but I'm not going to be scared. See, I, I read a stat. I had my wife pull it. We were driving somewhere, uh, Sarasota, I think it was, Manatee. And uh, for my son's only baseball game this season, they canceled the season. And so we're heading there. And so I had my wife look it up. I said, Google and find out from medical science what, what medical science says about the effect of fear on the immune system. And she Googled it and found all kind of articles and, and data that showed that fear absolutely compromises your immune system. Thus, Job can say, the thing I feared the most has come on me, and that which I dreaded has happened to me, Job 3.25. So you and I cannot let fear be the image that we tap into. We tap into power, love, and a sound mind. We tap into that heavenly image so that, um, I'm going to stretch it here, we become invincible. Come on. <laughs> Ooh, you stretching us, Pastor. Yes, I know it. I'm stretching you to life. We become invincible. See? See? See, I'm confident enough that if, if the mayor called and asked me, the governor, whoever called me, asked me, hey, with all that power you got, would you mind coming to this place and lay hands on all the, all the and coronavirus? Yes, I'll lay hands on them. I'm not, I don't have any fear. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You got it? Amen. So praise the Lord. Let's hold on in prayer. Now again, as I said to you, I don't know what's going to happen Sunday. But we'll find out. We'll make sure we let everybody know through our group meet, through our Facebook, Instagram. I'll probably put out a YouTube or something just to let you know. Um, so be on the lookout. But um, we're going to take authority right now. We did it this morning. But let's do it tonight. We're going to take authority over this virus. Because here's the reality. Though you and I might be living here fear-free, there are a lot of people who are scared. They are scared because they don't know what you know and they don't have what you have. And so we don't want to not be compassionate about people. I might be, you know, having fun, making fun, but in reality, people are scared. And that fear itself will draw things to them. And so we got we to pray for them. And we're praying for the economic status of our city and our nation and the world, the whole world dealing with this. Um, but you and I are the ones who are planted in this earth to deal with this. We're the only ones. I shot off an email uh, the other day to the mayor and to the governor. We're the only institution on this planet that can deal with this. I just want to make sure you know, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Governor, we're the only ones who can deal with this. In all your best efforts, you can, you can, you can try to sustain things, but we're the only ones equipped who can deal with spiritual, physical, emotional. Those areas, can nobody else touch it but us. You got it? And so I want us tonight to use our authority. Now, I want you just right now, just you don't have to do this, but just I want you to tap into that image. I want you to tap, in, tap that, that dominion image that that's, should be in you now, that that faith image, that power, love, and sound mind image, and, and, and that, that, that faithful image, that image of the heavenly man. Jesus said in Luke chapter 2, chapter 10, and verse 19, he said, Behold, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So you and I, I want you to have this image in you now. I can't be hurt by anything but also the image of, I have authority over all the devil's power. So when you encounter someone who they are fearful, if they'll let you grab their hand, grab their hand. 
if, if they'll just let you pray for them. Let me pray for you. Somebody who may be sick. It might just be the flu. It might just be pollen in the air. But the devil's going to tell them. He's going to do that's that thing. <laughs> I'm just telling you. So, but we have to be there. That's what we're here for. We're here, we're here to minister to people. Amen. So, Father God, now in Jesus' name, I want you to everybody just stretch your hands. In fact, I want you to turn to the outside of the church. Just, just all directions. Turn towards whatever wall close to you. Just, just in Jesus' name, we just take our, our authority right now. We use the authority you've given us in this city and in this region. God, we stand fearlessly. We stand courageously. We stand bravely in our authority. We stand knowing who we are, that we are no longer of that image of that man of the earth, but we are now bearing that image of the man from heaven. And just as he is, so are we in the world. So the same way, Father, Jesus Christ went about doing good and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil because you are with him. Thank you that, Father, we are those who go about and we do good. And we will heal all those who are oppressed of the devil because you are with us. That we will do the same works and greater works than, than Jesus did. We will do because he is now with you, the Father. Thank you now for giving us the authority, even the, the authority to use our mouth to decree and declare things in the earth. You said, Father, that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto us and light will shine on our ways. So right now, this night, we jointly, we corporately decree and declare this attack, this viral attack on our city, on our nation, on this planet. We call it over and done with. We command you, virus, get out of here and get back to hell right now in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Get out of here. Leave bodies. Leave nations. Leave cities. Leave, leave the town. Leave now. In the name of Jesus. You foul spirit of fear. We see you. We recognize you at work. And we command you to cease and desist from your maneuvers against the people of God and against the people of the earth. In the name of Jesus. We take our authority. We stand in our authority. We know no weapon formed against us will prosper. And so we use our authority. God, we stand in the gap for people who are fearful. We stand in the gap for people who are afraid. We stand in the gap for people who are ignorant of your goodness and your love and your protection. We send in a gap for them and we spread out that blanket of protection. We, we share that hedge of protection and we place that bloodline that has been around this ministry. We place that bloodline around this city and around this region that no more Viruses, no more infections coming to this region. And all those who, all, who already are infected, we release healing power right now. Those who are in the hospitals, those who are homebound, those who are quarantined, those who are still moving about and don't even know it, we speak to their bodies and we command bodies, heal now. We command bodies, Produce the antibodies that fight off those viruses now in the name of Jesus. Those antigens that fight off that virus multiply. Command that white blood cell count to do the job in the name of Jesus. Immune systems be strong. Be strong. Digestive system be strong. We pray spirits be strong. For Father, your word said that the spirit of man will sustain him in sickness. So we command every spirit to be strong. That this sickness will not take anybody else out. God, they've been hoping for the curve to begin to flatten. 
right now curved, we command you to flatten and flat line now. No more, de no more deaths, no more infections. We command it to be so now. But it'll be not many days hence that America opens back up. That America knows that there is a God in Israel. That it wasn't medical science. That it wasn't our shutdowns and our lockdowns, but it was the power of the living God. That busted up all the devil's works. And I thank you, Father, that this exceeding great army that's headquartered in this church, that God, no matter what happens in the next few days, that we stay strong, we stay together, and we encourage each other, and we build each other up, and we stand for each other, and we help each other where it's needed, that we would have all things in common when it's needed, that when one has little and no one has much, that we'll share, that no one has to lack and no one has to go without. I even declare over this house and everyone who's connected to this house that God, we flourish, we increase, we are fruitful even in a famine and we call for a quick end to the famine a quick end to the downturn, a quick end to it all. And we ask you, God, give wisdom to our president and all his staff, all his counsel. We ask you to give wisdom to those who are in the Center for Disease Control, those in the World Health Organization. Give wisdom to premiers and prime ministers and leaders, and presidents all over the land, all over the world. Give wisdom for their nations, the wisdom of God. Let your wisdom be spoken and heard in their ears. We pray for wisdom, Lord, for all the governors here in the United States of America, Father. We pray for wisdom, especially, Lord, for Governor Ron DeSantis, Father, in, in, in our state, that, Father, that the right decisions will be made, not on, on emotion, Father, but, Lord, by wisdom of God. We speak blessing upon them all. We speak blessing upon our mayor, that God, you give him wisdom and rest. I know some of them, Lord, they're probably not resting. They're, they're, they're frantic about their, their, their call, their, their, their jobs. But God, we pray that you give them even rest and peaceful nights. We pray that God, they, they'd walk in wisdom. That God, that you'd open doors for the prophets, men and women of God, to speak to those who are in authority with a thus saith the Lord the same way you showed David that David Lord was able to stop a plague over a whole nation wisdom will come to stop the plague over a whole nation God we ask you Lord to protect all of our police officers all of our firemen firefighters all of our paramedics ambulatory services father all of our doctors and nurses and all those who have to deal with sick patients and you know, there, we, we know fear is even running rampant in the medical field officers have been exposed even in Tampa Father and all other places Father we pray that God those peace officers according to your word in Romans 13 that you set a shield and a guard around them let not one of them be infected by this virus and that God they'll have a boldness and a courage that comes from you pray for teachers and all those who are dealing with vulnerable people, those who work in nursing homes, Father. We pray for those who society has called the most vulnerable ones, Lord. People with pre-existing conditions, God. Heal those conditions. <laughs> Heal the conditions in the name of Jesus. Go beyond healing coronavirus. Heal every condition that they may have in the name of Jesus. And Father, tonight we're so grateful for our protection. Thank you, Father, that no evil shall befall us. 
No plague will come near our dwelling. Thank you, Father. Whether it's pestilence or darkness or arrows or whatever it is, it will not work against us. We're thankful for it. We can sleep at night, rise by day without fear. I, I pray blessing upon every person in this room that as we go from this place, favor rests on us. Hallelujah. You said in your word in Psalm 512, Surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround us with your favor, even as with a shield. So let that blessing and that favor be upon these, your people. As we go about our business, as we go about our days, keep us. We pray for those who are our members and family who are not here. Keep them all. And God, at the time, bring us back together without a lost one, a sick one, or a feeble one among us. God, of all these things, we shall continue to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Put those hands together give God praise tonight. Come on, give God praise on this place. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Now I want you to live in the blessing. Live in it. Live in the security and safety of knowing Father God has you completely covered. Amen. Now again, as I said, I don't know when we'll be back together. I hope it's Sunday. Uh, if not, you'll see us online. And uh, But keep each other comforted, strengthened, and encouraged. Amen. And uh, God bless you. We love you. And uh, have a great night. Amen? Amen. All right. Be blessed. Be blessed. Good night. Back up where you had it.